Príjemné popoludne, milí priatelia, milí hostia, dámy a páni. Moje meno je Michal Hvorecký a vítam vás tu v literárnom stane Martinus na dnešnej debate, ktorá sa koná v rámci mesiaca autorského čítania, čo je už medzičasom najväčší stredoeurópsky literárny festival. A my sa tešíme, že toho roku je jeho zastávkou aj festival Pohoda. To nie je celkom bežné, je to festival, ktorý tento rok ako takého čestného hostia má Island, islandské spisovateľky a spisovateľov, ktorí putujú na dlhom stredoeurópskom turné Ostrava, Brno, Bratislava, ten, ob, e, niektorí aj na pohodu a Košice a Prešov, takže naozaj vidia kus Česka a Slovenskej republiky a vážime si, že túto zastávku majú aj u nás a, a je to samozrejme možné vďaka najrozličnejším partnerom a, a podporovateľom, ktorý, bez ktorých by takéto niečo sa nemohlo uskutočniť. Za to im veľmi pekne ďakujeme. A, a dnešný, dnešné popoludne tu, v tomto stane, je naozaj také výnimočné, pretože tu máme jedinú putujúcu dvojicu, manželskú dvojicu, partnerskú dvojicu, um, rodičovskú dvojicu, a, ktorú tvorí Sikridur Hagalin Björnsdotýr a, a tu na, na Slovensku už tiež veľmi známy Jon Kalman Stefansson, ja vám ich kratučko predstavím a budem sa s nimi rozprávať v anglickom jazyku. A potom vám tak zosumarizujem do Slovenčiny, čo vám odpovedali. A budeme aj čítať z diel obidvoch autorov. A na záver bude pochopiteľne aj autogramiáda, pretože od pána Stefansona máme v Slovenčine viaceré knižky. Práve vyšla aj, aj nová, takže budete mať možnosť si knihu pochopiteľne aj zakúpiť a, a podpísať. Takže toľko len, aby ste si vedeli urobiť predstavu o tom, čo vás čaká. A veľmi si vážime, že ste v takom počte prišli prišli medzi nás a ja vám predstavím teraz spisovateľku Zigridur Hagalin Björnsdotir, ktorá vyštudovala aj v Španielsku um, históriu a v Amerike na Columbia University žurnalistiku. Okrem toho, že je spisovateľkou, je aj um, moderátorkou televíznych správ, je takou veľmi známou tvárou na, na ostrove a, a je teda partnerkou, život manželkou uh, pána Stefansona, spolu majú dve deti. A budeme sa trošku rozprávať aj o tom, aké to je byť manželmi a, a autormi. A v češtine máme jej jednu knihu, ktorú vám vrelo odporúčam, a to je román Ostrov. A dnes si predstavíme jej novinku, ktorá sa volá v angličtine The Fires, alebo teda Ohne. A to je knižka, ktorá, ako som sa práve dozvedel, onedlho vychádza takisto v českom preklade. Takže budeme mať možnosť čítať od nej trochu viac. Takže, takže toľko, toľko o pani Sigridur. A, a, um, Jona Kalmana a Stefansona, mnohí z vás určite poznajú napríklad vďaka knižke ako Letné svetlo a potom príde noc, alebo Ryby nemajú nohy a ďalšie, ktoré vydáva u nás Artforum, vynikajúce knihupectvo aj vydavateľstvo. A je to teda poviedkár, básnik, ale aj románopisec a hovorím, práve teda budeme mať možnosť čítať aj jeho, jeho novú knižku. So, takže I just made a short introduction into your work and, and life, and, um, and uh, it's a great honor and pleasure for us to have you here on stage with us at Pohoda, Pohoda Festival and at Months of Authors Reading. And my, you know, we used to have a lot of uh, writing couples in the, or some, some famous writing couples in the literary history. So I would maybe ask at the very beginning, how do you manage uh, as a couple, a creative couple, your life and work balance and a, and a partnership and, and, uh, and a being, a, being a parent as well. And, and, and how do you, uh, do you read each other's work? Um, you write very differently, you write very different styles, but, but still, do you comment or do you have other editors who decide first, is this good or, or not so good te- new text? Moja prvá otázka sa práve týka manželského spolužitia a autorstva. Že či si navzájom čítajú svoje texty ako prvý, či si robia navzájom editorov, hoci píšu veľmi odlišne, ale ako vlastne dokážu túto, túto život a prácu spojiť? Ahoj, pohota. <laughs> 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 I think um, living with Jon Kalman is quite easy. Život s mojim manželom je ľahký. No, I, 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 I think it's not such a big deal in, in Iceland like it is in many other uh, countries uh, that that writing couple is living together because there are so few of us mm-hmm. that it's sort of, you're, you're bound to run into, you know, somebody who's, who's doing the same thing as, as, as you do, I think. Mm-hmm. 
Takže na Islande to nie je až také ťažké, lebo nás je naozaj veľmi málo. Nemáme takú obrovskú konkurenciu. Well, yes, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, more than easy to, to live with Syria Highland. It's, it's, it's a bliss. It's a, it's a wonder, wonderful thing. Uh, but uh, yes, we read each other text. Uh, she is my first reader and, and, I, and vice versa. So she really sees how bad writer that I am. She see, sees how terrible things that I'm doing. And, and she just sent me away saying, you know, keep on doing something better. So it works perfectly. Takže ona naozaj je mojou prvou čitateľkou a je veľmi prísna. Ona mi stále hovorí, zlepši sa, to, to nie je dosť dobré, a prepracuj to a podobne. Um, and how is it with the kids? Uh, you know, you are also parents and um, we live in the age of, uh, in a digital age. Uh, kids uh, read less. Uh, I recently met a famous German writer who complained to me that uh, his teenage son They have a huge, you know, huge bookshelves uh, with thousands of books, and his son is just playing computer games and and uh, uh, watching uh, social networks and, and ignoring the books. So, h- how do you manage to? Do you inspire your kids to read, and uh, do they love to read? Uh, do, do they read your work? Uh, well, I have two kids, and we have you know four kids together. Uh, not together, but uh, <laughs> I have two kids, uh, two and two. And uh, I have a, a, a boy who is, you know, 23, and he is a uh, hip-hop musician, so he, he listens more to music than to read. And, and my daughter, she, had, she has re- read all her books, but just one of mine. <laughs> Ja mám dokopy štyri deti, trošku sa mu to tak plietlo, dve z prvého vzťahu a dve teraz, mladšie. A jeden z jeho, jeho syn sa venuje skôr hip-hopu, takže má radšej hudbu ako, ako literatúru, ale jeho dcéra čítala všetky knihy Zigridur a iba jednu jeho vlastnú. But I, I think that it's pretty normal for kids to stop reading in a period, even if they've been avid readers when they were like from 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 the time they learn to read until maybe 12 13 14 and then maybe there's a an interruption there are so many things happening to their bodies and their minds that they somehow uh, grow out of books for a while but i think a true reader will always come back to the books i think they they and we can see it with our teenage girls who are 18 19 that they are are returning to the books now mm-hmm. si, že do istej miery je normálne, že deti v istom veku prestanú čítať, že sa v, v, v nich vnútri, s ich telami, s ich dušami udeje toľko zmien za taký krátky čas, že niektoré veci jednoducho vynechajú, niektoré veci sa menia. Čiže aj keď ste ich v detstve viedli k čítaniu, k literatúre, tak potom na istý čas s tým prestanú. My sme to tiež zažili vo svojej rodine, ale zároveň sme aj videli, ako sa neskôr, keď dospejú, k tomu vrátia. Naše 18-19 ročné céry znovu objavili knižky, keď ich to pre ne bolo samé opäť inšpiratívne. And maybe we could start with um, Zigridur, your book Island, Ostrov, uh, the only one which we have in uh, Czech translation until now. The soon we will have the next one. Uh, you described it yourself as a geological thriller in, in a way. Like, like a book which combines um, maybe the first one we could, we could mention first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you could uh, give us a short of introduction into, into, your, into your style and, and, and your topics. Well, I'm a journalist by trade. That's what I've been doing for 20 years. It's doing journalism. And um, after 20 years, I, I felt that I needed to do something. I needed to take a real situation and sort of uh, expand it in the imagination. So uh, I had this old idea about Iceland, which is an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I had this idea about writing a novel about what would happen if Iceland was completely cut off from the rest of the world without explanation. There are just no ships, there are no airplanes, there, are no, there is no contact with the outside world. Um, ja som 20 rokov novinárkou, to je moja prvá profesia, moja hlavná profesia. Ale priznám sa, že po istom čase som mala pocit, že chcem to nejako vykročiť aj niekam ďalej. 
prekonať sama seba, skúsiť niečo iné. A nosila som už dlho v hlave myšlienku románu, myšlienku fikcie, že by som tú skutočnosť, ktorej sa venujem ako žurnalistka, rozvinula aj do, do fikcie, že by som viac využila svoju obrazotvornosť. A tak sa zrodil na môj nápad, ktorý som mala dlho v hlave, a to e, Island ako ostrov, ktorý sa bez z javného vysvetlenia zrazu ocitne dokonale odrezaný od sveta. To znamená, že prestane akákoľvek lodná alebo letecká doprava a ostrov zostane úplne odrez, odrezaný sám pre, na seba. And it's, it's basically, it's journalism, not in the past, not in the present, but in the future. If you sort of try to imagine what happens to real, real events and situations, if you just take them into the future and imagine them a bit further. A v mojom prípade som sa rozhodla, že nebudem pracovať s minulosťou alebo súčasnosťou, ale bude to taká projekcia, taká dystopická projekcia budúcnosti. And it's, um, maybe it's a little bit in, in the tradition of Orwell and, and yeah. Margaret Atwood, for instance, they, they, they call it uh, speculative fiction, mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. um, about uh, trying to use the facts and the situations of today to try to imagine what will happen in the future. Mm-hmm. Tomuto žánru sa hovorí aj špekulatívna fikcia alebo špekulatívna fantastika, keď sa vlastne zoberie nejaký skutočný problém dnešného sveta a urobí sa akási projekcia toho, čo by mohlo byť niekedy, niekedy v budúcnosti. Fortunately, I'm usually wrong. So, so... <laughs> na, šťast, na šťastie to používa nesprávne. Jo, 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 it was, you were wrong in your prediction, you mean, or... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 there, the, um, the island, mm. especially, is, is rather pessimistic about human nature and what happens if we are cut off from the rest of the world. But then COVID came and everybody was cut off from the rest of the world and it turned out that people are actually nicer beings than I imagined. So, so I was very relieved <laughs> to find that out. A musím povedať, že v niečom som sa pomýlila, pretože ja som si predstavovala, čo by znamenala takáto izolácia a potom naozaj prišla pandémia, prišiel COVID. Skutočne Island zostal nadlho odrezaný od sveta, ale ľudia sa správali milšie ako v mojej, ako v mojej knihe. And maybe you could give us a short introduction into the very new book, which is coming out soon in, in, in Czech language. Yes. In translation of Martina Kašparová, as far as I know, yes. Mm-hmm. Poprosil som ju o taký krátky úvod do tej novej knižky, ktorá vychádza. Maybe just a short intro into, into the topic of... Um, this book, The Fires, Love and Other Disasters, um, it's, it's, uh, well, it's basically, it's also based on, on news. It's about, it's a geological thriller, yes. It's about uh, an eruption, volcanic eruption that takes place close to Reykjavik, the, the capital of Iceland. And it's a story of a woman who is a volcanologist. She's the expert, leading expert in her field in Iceland. And she has to deal with these eruptions as they happen around her home. But at the same time, her uh, family life and her heart are breaking apart because she is falling in love for the first time in her life. A moja nová kniha s názvom Ohne, ktorá čoskoro vychádza Ohne, láska a iné katastrofy, spracúva tému výbuchu sopky nedaleko Reykjavíku, hlavného mesta Islandu a hlavnou hrdinkou je vulkanologička, ktorá skúma teda erupcie po celom ostrove a v mojej knihe sa vyskytne motív toho, že jednak teda nastane tento výbuch nedaleko hlavného mesta, ale zároveň jej vlastná rodina akoby prechádza sopečnou činnosťou, akousi výbušnosťou, rozpadáva sa a ona rieši naraz tieto dve veci. Three months after the book was published, it starts to erupt exactly at the same place that she has predicted. A naozaj, ako si už mnohí porozumeli, tri mesiace po videní knižky tá známa erupcia naozaj aj nastala a, a na, práve aj na tom mieste, ktoré bolo opísané v románe. Maybe we could move each, each uh, us a little bit. My sa trošku posunieme, aby ste mohli čítať preklad uh, Martiny Kašparovej. Práve prekladatelia sú pre nás veľmi vzácni v tomto prípade, lebo ich veľmi málo z islanštiny, takže... Svona líkur því. Jörðin umlíkur meg allar alterinnar 4500 milión ár. Þungjanar kvílir á mér lötur hægur og vægðarlaus, sláttur logandi hjartans. Lögmál sem eira engu, upphaf lífsins og endalók þess. Ég er á valdenar skortir í flöjilsmjúkum, dimmum lófinar. Reyni að hreyfa höfuðið en það hakast ekki. Opna augun og loka þeim aftur, fullum af myrkri. 
best að halda þeim lokuðum, einbeita sér að því, ekki hugsa. Ekki leiða hugan að því að ég sé dáin, að svona sé þá að vera dáin. Það er ekki afleitt niðurstað að þráttur er allt, leysir ansi margt. Leysir mig undan ákvörðunum, fullkomin afsökun fyrir því að þurfa ekki að horfast í augu við gjörðin mínar. Engar fleiri andökunætur, engin tár, engin eftirsjá fram. Ekkert, aldrei nokkuð tíman fram. Af jörð er ég komin, að jörðu skal ég aftur verða, en hugurinn neitar að gefast upp. Hann heldur áfram sínu þráhyggjukenda rausi um heimsendi, varpar upp myndum af húsum sem falla niður í svartar sprungur, ríða andartak á brúninni áður þau síga hægt á hliðina, leggjast með þungu andvarpi niður í eldin. Húsgögg, málverk, mynda, album, píano, örbylgjóopnar, allt hverfur undir svarta tunguna sem stendur úr rauðum skoltinum, rennur yfir landið og eyðir öllu sem á vegi þess verður, öllum minningum, Öllum minningum og snertingum, barnateikningum og vandlega ryggsuguðum mottum. Allt lítur þessu óseðjandi hungri og hverfur í myrkrið. Finnst þér það ekki fallegt? Röddin hljómar í höfði mér eins og þú sérst við hlið mér. Andlitið ljómar af barslegri hrifningu. Þú brosir til mín, augun full af hlátri. Hugur minn veit að það er blekking. Þú ert ekki hér, en hjarta mitt syngur af gleði og brestur um leið. Ég fekk þó að elska. Hættu þessu, segi ég við sjálfum mér, hættu að rifja upp og muna og sakna, ekki anda ótt og títt og klára það litla súrefni sem eftir er, vertu skinnsum, kona. Beittu nú þessari andskotan skinnsemi þinni, homo sapiens, hvað gagnast hún þér núna? Dýrinu sem kallar sig hinna viti bornu manneskju kórunu sköpunaverksins. Hér liggur þú þá í hnipri, maðkur í skauti jarðar, mús undir mosa, ofvaxið heilabúið þrútið af minningum og staðreyndum og eftirsjá, formúlum og aukastöfum og upplýsingum og draumum og hjælst í hrókað þínum að þú getur greint á milli þeirra, hent reyður á heiminum með þekkingu þinni og varst ekki einu sinni færum að skilja þitt eigið hjarta, einföld lögmól þess sem allir eiga þekkja. Svona líkur því en það hófst ekki hér. Þetta byrjaði allt í vetur sem leið. Mannstu? Thank you very much. Ďakujeme veľmi pekne. Človek by mal hneď chuť naučiť sa po islánsky. Tak krásne, tak krásne to znie. Zikrit, maybe one more question now to the, to the text, because you, in the novel you mentioned this one particular volcano, but basically uh, whole Iceland as an, as, as an island is, is a sort of volcano. So it seems like you live in a very unsecure, uh, you know, uh, earth, piece of earth. And, and um, do you think this is somehow influencing the way of life Icelanders have, the way you, 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 you consider yourself to be part of nature and part of the uh, environment you live in? Is it somehow very much, uh, it sounds from your hero like she's very much dealing with this issue like where geologically I am on the earth. Pýtam sa na to, že či vlastne v jej prípade knihy je to jedna konkrétna sopka, ale vlastne celý Island je akousi veľkou sopkou, ako sú veľmi neistým, neistou pôdou pod nohami a hrdinka to veľmi rieši, tento svoj vzťah k zemi a k prírode. I think uh, you just get used to the place you live in and where you grew up in. You, you don't really think about it as a dangerous place. And, and for instance, I'm, I'm terrified of bats. I, I, I really, I'm, I'm really scared of bats. Uh, there are no bats in Iceland, so I don't have to think about them. But every time, you know, I would be terrified if I lived in Slovakia because you have you have bats. You we know? have, we do, yeah, we yeah. do. So, so it's not really something that you think about all the time. But, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know, and it's the same with volcanoes. You know, in Iceland, that they are there, but we're not really thinking about them all the time. Mm -hmm. So, so in a way, so, so, uh, yeah, volcanoes are Icelandic bats. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Sopky sú islandské netopiere, to je ako nejaký názov románu, uh, sa dá rovno použiť v ďalšej islandskej knihe. Na, zvyknete si na to, v akej krajine žijete, nech je, nech je akákoľvek. Um, a ja ju nevnímam ako nebezpečnú 
automaticky. Ja sa oveľa viac bojím v živote netopierov a, a pritom na Islande netopier nežijú. A, ale napriek tomu sa ich bojím a predstavujem si, že keď, že, či by tam nejaké mohli byť a, a vy tu na Slovensku asi ich máte, potvrdil som, že máme. A, ale to neznamená, že my, každý z nás denne myslí na netopiere. Takže, takže a tedy zaznela tá pekná veta, ktorá možno dúfame, že bude názvom nejakej ďalšej, ďalšej uh, knižky. Uh, Sigrid, I, I have to ask this question, because um, I, we were mentioning this writing couples as an important part of literary history, but we have to also openly admit that in the past, usually the female part of the couple was somehow in the shadow, and, 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 and you wrote from a different perspective and you, you started a different career as well, but, but uh, was it hard for you as a, as a female writer to get recognized when you were beginning, when you changed the career from journalism to fiction? Hovorím, pýtam sa na to, že či je to pre ňu v rámci toho partnerského, manželského zväzku autorského ťažšie ako pre ženu. Lebo vieme z tej histórie tých slávnych párov spisovateľských, že tá spisovateľka žena to často mala náročnejšie sa presadiť a bola tak trochu v tieni toho muža. Možno toto už tak nie je ten prípad. I didn't really change careers. I, I just, I wrote my first book because it was just inside of me. And uh, I wrote it for myself and I didn't really write it to be published. But uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, who is a, a, a publisher, she wanted to publish it. So she, I never expected any of this. I didn't really expect to, you know, sit in a tent in Pohuta in, in, in Slovakia <laughs> six years later. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's, it's all a big adventure to me still. But, uh, but it's, it's just, I mean, you have had this career of being a professional writer for so long, for as long as you have been working as your whole adult life. So. You have so many books, you know, that you have, have written. I have, I have my three books. I just finished my f- fourth one. So it's really, I mean, it's... And besides, even if we work, you know, if we had the same experience, I don't think we would ever be competing with each other. I don't think it would be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, moja kariéra sa nezmenila tým, že som napísala knižku. Ja som mala tú knihu v sebe, vo svojom vnútri. Ja som ju nepísala preto, aby bola vydaná. Ja som ju napísala, lebo som chcela. Netušila som, že budem publikovanou autorkou, ani to nebol úplne môj zámer. Napísala som ju a našla som vydavateľa, ktorý ju chcel vydať. Takže pre mňa toto všetko je ešte veľmi nové a je to naozaj dobrodružstvo, je to pre mňa niečo nečakané. Nikdy by som pred šiestimi rokmi nepredpokladala, že budem sedieť v Trenčine na festivale Pohoda v tomto stane a budem vám rozprávať o svojich knihách. Mám teraz dokončenú tretiu knihu, práve som dokončila štvrtú, tri mi už vyšli. A a mám dojem, že, a tak sa obrátila aj na svojho manžela, že vlastne medzi nimi dvoma to tak ako nikdy nebol vlastne nejaký veľký problém, že on má oveľa dlhšiu autorskú kariéru, oveľa viac titulov vydaných a je to jeho celý život, aj celý život ich vzťahu a, a jednoducho ona to, oni to nevnímajú ako nejaký rozpor, ale naopak ako, takže možno je to taký dobrý, pozitívny príklad, že to už ide aj, že to už ide aj inak. Um, uh, thank you so much and, 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 and maybe we could, maybe we could uh, on, uh, uh, ďakujem a veľmi pekne. Jon Kalman, do you want to add something to this uh, position from a male perspective? Uh, well, uh, if I remember uh, correct, then uh, Ozi Saramako started to write 41 or 2, exactly like her, and he got the Nobel Prize, so <laughs> just wait for 20 years. <laughs> A ak si dobre spomínam, tak uh, slávny portugalský spisovateľ Jose Saramago začal písať, keď mal 42 rokov, presne vtedy, keď začala písať moja manželka a dostal Nobelovú cenu, takže počkajme 20 rokov. <laughs> um, so, do you feel like you're, it's, it's helping you to work as a couple in a way, and, or do you work very individually and are able somehow to combine the, the way you you completely write your own style, the wife writes something different, and you, you, you think you just manage it perfectly as a couple. I mean, yeah, we, we, uh, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, writing and books, and, 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 and as I said, you know, she is the first that, that reads what I'm doing, and, 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 and vice versa, and it's just a help. It's, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, very positive energy which mm-hmm. i think that's flowing 
between us. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and a lot of happiness also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, takže vlastne píšeme knihy obidva, ja, ona je mojou prvou čitateľkou a ja to vnímam predovšetkým ako vzájomnú veľkú pomoc a aj ako, aj ako veľké šťastie. A, tak by sa to dalo zhrnúť a dobre sa to počúva. A, and I think so, it's also that we are so very different as an author. Ano. So, so uh, maybe, maybe that's positive, of, positive also, mm -hmm. and and therefore we are able to help each each, each other. Mm -hmm. A možno naozaj pomáha aj to, že píšeme veľmi odlišným štýlom. Takže možno práve preto si dokážeme aj nejako pomôcť a poradiť. Mm -hmm. I would maybe ask about the topic of a home, like because especially Jon, in your writing, I feel like you are very closely connected to the location. Uh, to the topography of the places you are writing about in your short stories, in your longer texts, in your, in your novels. It's always just sometimes very small village where such a, such a fictional world um, is developed from a, from a, 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 in, a, in a way of storytelling. Um, chcem sa spýtať práve na ten pojem domova, pretože v Jonovom písaní veľmi často je príbeh spojený s nejakým konkrétnym, často veľmi maličkým miestom, nejakým zálivom, dedinkou, nejakým mestečkom a z toho malého sveta sa vytvorí taká, akoby, taký fikcionálny svet, taký, veľ, taký väčší celok. Uh, so maybe if you could describe us a little bit, if it's not too intimate, your, your home and what it means for you to, to, to be at home. Uh, to be at home, you know, uh, at my home. At yeah. your home, in well, Iceland. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a, uh, one remarkable thing about, you know, Icelandic language that that we have the same word for uh, uh, the home and the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, Heima or Heimer, he Heima and and Heimer, and I think that's that's saying that's that say so much mm -hmm. that that uh, that I think the Icelanders they they always uh, often feel that that they are on in, in the middle of of the universe. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so you, you feel at home, when you're at home, you are also everywhere. Mm -hmm. Pýtal som sa na ten pocit domova, na to, že čo pre nich znamená vlastne to miesto, ktoré je spojené s ich písaním. A, a on hovorí, že mu pripadá na Islandčine zvlášť pozorhodné, že slovo domov a slovo svet sú takmer identické. A hovorí, že mu to pripadá ako veľmi výpovedné pre ten pocit ostrova, pre ten pocit Islandiana, pretože keď sú doma, tak sú vlastne zároveň vo vesmíre, že sú akoby niekde v strede, že si uvedomujú, že je to zároveň akési konkrétne miesto domoviny, ale zároveň sú všade. A, a, a možno to je taký ten, ten, ten islandský pocit. And um, when you decide a location which you want to describe, because in, as I know your books and I can also see the development of your life, how you move from one place, like from Keflavik to, to, to other locations, to, to that fjord and, and elsewhere. Uh, do you always need like a very concrete place and, or do you invent uh, a fictional places as well? Uh, Keď čítate jeho knihy Jonove, tak viete aj trošku jeho životopis, ako od toho Keflavíku sa dostával do iných fjordov, zálivov, dediniek a podobne. A sa pýtam na to spojenie s jeho písaním a, a, a bývaním. Well, I learn very quickly when I, start, when I started to write a fiction that, that I don't choose the places. It's the places that choose me and I don't choose the characters. The character choose me in a way. You know, it's, it's, it's both strange and, and, and wonderful to, to always experience the same feeling while writing that, that you, you don't control so much over it. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a flow that just Flow, flows out. Odpovedal tak, že nie on si vyberá tie miesta, ale má pocit, že tie miesta si vyberajú jeho. Rovnako nie on si vyberá postavy, ale tie postavy si nachádzajú nejakú cestu k nemu. A hovorí, že si uvedomuje, že to znie zvláštne, ale ono to také aj, on to tak vníma, že to tak naozaj je. A že je to zároveň krásne, že to pre ňoho je to, to podstatné v tom písaní, že je to akýsi pocit, že nie všetko má pod kontrolou, nie všetko to ovláda, že je to skôr akýsi prúd, ktorý, ktorý, ktorý plinie a ktorý ho niekam dovedie. And I remember when I was uh, trying to write my first book and, and it, 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 yeah, it, it was a 
a bit difficult time because I, I had to write two incredible bad novels. Uh, luckily, I, I, I never published it. I just throw it away because if I had published it, I, I, uh, in Iceland you were put in jail if, if you write a bad novel. <laughs> um. Priznám sa, keď som písal svoju prvú knižku, tak to bolo pre mňa veľmi ťažké obdobie. Aj zvolil som si ťažkú vec a, a som rád, že nakoniec to nevyšlo, pretože sa mi to nevydarilo. Veľmi som sa s tým trápil a dobre, že to nevyšlo, pretože by som skončil vo väzení, lebo na Islande vás dajú do väzenia, keď napíšete zlú knihu. And uh, you know, I wanted to, to write about the, the night life of, of, of Reykjavík. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about 1990 or something, 95 and 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 because i i wanted to be you know some kind of butterfly uh but the main character and it's very you know it didn't work it was yeah very bad story and and very boring and, and it was <laughs> killing me and and uh, always in the middle of the story the main character took a taxi and went out of the city um teraz spomína ten prvý román ktorý mal byť príbehom o nočnom živote v Reykjavíku okolo roku 1990-1995, tie, tie prvé divoké roky. A jeho hrdina, keď si ho na neho teba spomenie, tak ho to zabíja. Proste hrozne to bolo celé nudné a zlé a nevydarené. A z nejakého dôvodu hrdina vždycky uprostred nejakého príbehu, keď sa niečo dialo, sadol do taxíka a nechal sa odviesť mimo mesto. And I said, you know, stop, stop, what are you doing? You know, we, we are not going to the fucking country. We are, you know, it's, it's a butterfly story. There's no butterfly in the country, it's countryside. And he just, you know, he didn't listen to me. And so we took a ride with the taxi, uh, you know, two, three hours. And it was very costly, you know, I had to pay it a lot. A tak uh, sa stalo naozaj to, ja som mu hovoril, zastav sa, nikam nechoď, tu buď. A ten hrdina ho neposlúchal, odchádzal stále preč. A na dlhé jazdy, dvoj, trojhodinové jazdy, ja som hovoril, to je veľmi drahé, to, to nemôžeme si dovoliť, ale teda nepočúval ma. And, and the strange thing and an annoying thing at that time for me is suddenly it was much easier for me to write. It started to flow, it was, you know, more fun and easy and, and the character was, was looking at me and saying, you know, what did I tell you? And I said, fuck you. And, and <laughs> so we, I went back home and started to write these terrible butterfly books. And, and, but in the end, I just have to give up and, and follow his mm-hmm. advice. A jednoducho som to po istom čase už vzdal, už som to nevydržal a Počúval som toho svojho hrdinu, počúval som to, čo chce on robiť a zrazu som pocitil takú ľahkosť. Písalo sa mi oveľa leh- ľahšie a lepšie ako, ako predtým a, a, a moja postava mi hovorila, čo som ti hovoril, mal si ma počúvať a on potom povedal jedno škaredé slovo, to nebudem tlmočiť, a, ale po, to ste porozumeli všetci, a, takže OK. A, Jon, please give us a short introduction into the text we will now hear in... A, Um, Icelandic original language and uh, we will have a translation here in a, uh, this is a Czech translation budeme teraz uh, nám Jon urobí také intro uh, do tejto knižky Ľudské srdce um, samozrejme tu máme český prekad lebo je to teda festival, ktorý je uh, pochádza z Brna a odtiaľ sa rozvíja ale máme samozrejme aj slovenské preklady tie tu aj budú teda sa dať kúpiť so uh, yes. yeah, well, uh, it's a It's from uh, the Heart of Man. It's a, it's a last book in a trilogy that I wrote. Uh, I didn't choose it myself. It was chosen for me, so so I had no influence about, about that. Uh, but uh, it was a very strange experience for me to to read it first time, you know, three days ago, because it was written 12 years ago, mm-hmm. and and I had forgot totally everything about it, <laughs> and and. And the funny and the pleasant thing that I would have uh, write it very differently today. And I was very glad to see that I have, you know, that uh, I'm not standing still as an author. Mm-hmm. Um, takže ide o záverečnú časť trilógie, ktorá sa volá Srdce človeka. A taký do nás dostala názov. A on mal zvláštnu skúsenosť s čítaním tohto textu na tomto festivale, prvýkrát pred tromi dňami, keď začala jeho cesta po, po Česku a Slovensku. A je to text, ktorý vznikol pred 12 rokmi a hovorí, že dnes by ho napísal úplne inak, ale neľutuje to, aký ten text vznik bol vtedy a hovorí, že ale zároveň sa veľmi teší, že sa vyvinul ako autor niekam inam. Please, so floor is yours, so we disappear. Morguninn eftir er hann, semt, er hann semtur í ferðalag, annað ferðalag. 
yfir heiðar og fjöll, niður í fjörð, eins og það sem ekki komið nóg af slíku. En það eru við þetta sumar, þetta verður mjúkt ferðalag, bara langur göngutúr og gott að koma spurst, jafnvel meiri en gott, vera einn með sjálfum sér upp á heiði, upp á fjöllum, maður hugsa skýrar í fjallalofti, sér lífið frá öðru sjónarhorni, hvort sem það er út af sjálfu loftunni eða fjarveru frá fólki og byggð. Hann er sendum í bref, skrifað af Geirþrúði, stílað af kaupmannin í 300 manna plássi í þar næsta fyrði. Strákurinn þekkir þetta pláss sæmilega, hann færi snær sveitinni þar sem hann ólst upp eftir að faðir hans drukknaði. Hann á að afhenda brefið og býða skriflega eftir svari. Kemst hann gáð á einu degi en þarf að gista. Fyrir ekki einn frekar en áður en nú er það ekki Jens sem erfitt er að halda í við. Jens sem að vona brefið frá stráknum Ertu lifandi mannfjandi með alla útlimi, tekst þér að láta dagana líða án þess að hafa mig nálægt þér? Nei, ekki Jens, heldur Snorri, fyrrverandi kaupmaður, núverandi ræfi til hótelkjallara, mjór og fjölur og varla þetta að kalla þér fara þetta saman, hvor í sínum heimi, sínu minningum, sínu óvissu. Áskerður hótelstýra hafði komið upp í hús Geirþrúðar, spurst hvort það var hægt að fá strákinn lánaðan í tvo daga, fylgja Snorra suður í þetta pláss. Kaupmaðurinn fyrirverandi, hálf ónýttur göngumaður, óvanur myndi villast, en tekur ekki mála að fara þetta á hesti. Ekki vilja setjast að hest, síðan að reyði einu spretti suður til Reykjavíkur til þess eins að komast að því að konan hans, Aldís, elskaði Guð talsvert meiri en hann. En sem sé, Snorri á að fara þangað suður og skoða orgel, kaupa það fyrir hótelið ef honum líst sæmælega á, gengur ekki að vera hún tónlistar. Við erum ekki mikið meiri en fiskar á hún hennar. Og við höfum alls ekki efni á að missa mann eins og snorra frá okkur, bætti hótelstýran við. Ekki að ég síti það, sagði Helga, en Friðrik verður ekki sáttu við að hafa snorra áfram fyrir augum. Tónlistin er starrinn Friðrik og Tryggvavislun, svaraði Áskerður. Og það var auðsótt að fá strákinn til fyldar og merkileg tilvilin því að stóði mitt til að senda hann með þetta bref þangað suður eftir og nú ganga þeir inn Tungudal, snorri og strákurinn Sjaldan samsíða oft tíu metrar á milli, strákurinn gleymir sér, gleymir snorra, gleymir tilgangi ferðarnar, erindunni og það er gott að vera ferð, finna landið hækka, láta fæturnar hugsa fyrir sig en samt líður hún mikið vel. Thank you for, for, for the reading. Um, maybe just from, also from this excerpt, in a way we can get a glimpse at your writing style and the art you develop a character. Um, there's always, or very often, some sort of a very unusual thing that happens to a, to a person and, and suddenly there's a twist, there's some sort of a fundamental change in the way his narrative is, is developed. Hovorím o tom, že na tomto krátkom úrivku sa dá veľmi dobre pochopiť spôsob, akým často Jón rozvíja svoj autorský štýl, kde často postava zažije niečo nezvyčajné, niečo prekvapivé, nejaký zásadný zvrat, ktorý zmení to rozstávačstvo, ten prúd a, a nastane nejaká silná, silná pointa. Maybe you could tell us how you... You mentioned already that characters choose you, not you choose them, but somehow you have to probably watch them very closely, people around you, people in your, in your place where you live. And, and how do you think this, this twist is developed? How do you usually try to you know, make this character alive and make them so, you know, really so lively as a, as a, as a storyteller, as a, as a character? Uh, I think that, that if I could explain it rationally and, and, and uh, then I couldn't write about it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's all based on, on, on feeling that, 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 you know, you, you know, I, I, I sense my character, you know, I, it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's like they are living inside me. So, so, uh, so the, the flows out, yeah, very easy in a way. And, 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 uh, you know, if I, if I would, if I would set something, uh, let them say something wrong, they would just turn on, uh, turn to me and said, you know, what are you doing? And it's not me talking like that. Mm -hmm. So they help, help, help me a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Priznám sa, nemám preto racionálne vysvetlenie a asi to vychádza z toho, čo som spomínal na začiatku, s tým mojim vnímaním, že pre mňa kľúčové sú asi tie pocity, ktoré vo mne vyvolávajú, že tých ľudí okolo seba citlivo vnímam a že oni akoby zo mňa nejakým spôsobom plynú, zo mňa, zo mňa vychádzajú a, a možno keby som ich nechal povedať niečo nesprávne, niečo falošné, tak že by vlastne mi to vyčítali a že by som pochopil, že tak to nemá ísť, že to je jednoducho veľmi taký prirodzený proces, ktorý akoby zo mňa vychádza ľahko. And it's, it's one of the wonderful thing uh, to write that, that there's constantly something unexpected coming up hmm. that, that, that I hadn't foreseen and, and you know person that I have dreamed of and situation etc. Et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, uh, I think every time when I sit down to write in, in the morning, something new when unexpected pops up and sometimes so un- unexpected and so big that, that it changes the course of the whole story. A ten moment takého prekvapenia a takého niečoho nečakaného je naozaj si kľúčový v mojom písaní. Často je to aj sen, je to nejaká drobná situácia. Každé ráno, keď si sa dám k písaciemu stolu a začínam, tak mám pocit, že to nečakané prichádza, že sa niečo udeje. A často je tá zmena taká zásadná, že úplne zmení charakter toho, toho celého príbehu. Wiser and deeper than you, because uh, you can't comprehend or understand or explain everything that's, that's coming up or, or out. A celkovo si myslíš, že akoby v dobrej literatúre často je ten text múdrejší ako autor, že asi sa tam na nedá všetko pochopiť. Má pocit, že vlastne je to, je to niečo, čo ho môže nás presahovať. But then it's also for me that, that for me that the, the language is, is, is also uh, Like music, it's, it's like a great uh, instrument uh, that then, then yes, so when I'm writing, I'm not only describing things, but also creating some kind of, of music. Mm-hmm. A často to vnímam tak, že keď vlastne píšem, že je to niečo ako hudba, že, to, že to aj nejako znie, čiže... Mm-hmm. Well, now we have the month July and it's uh, for me also a celebration of Icelandic writing, Icelandic literature, of Icelandic storytelling tradition. It's, for us, it's a gift uh, to have this opportunity to have like 30 authors coming to Czech and Slovak Republic. And uh, in a way, it's also an honor for Iceland to, as a land of, of, of a storytelling, land, lands of, uh, of the myths and, 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 uh, and the sagas. And, um, Hovorím o tom, že tento celý mesiac júli je aj takou oslavou islandského písania, islandskej literatúry. Je to aj taký dar pre nás, že môžeme spoznávať 30 autoriek a autorov v tej dlhej tradícii islandských mýtov a, a, a ság. Um, could you maybe shortly explain to us how it's possible that exactly Iceland became a, a, a land of writers and also, that's very important, land of the readers? Maybe both of you, you could tell us a bit about, about how it happened. Pýtam sa na to, že ako sa to stalo, že práve Island je tou krajinou spisovateľov, kde je najväčší počet spisovateľov na počet obyvateľov, ale aj čitateľov. To je takisto veľmi dôležité. Well, I think uh, literature was Iceland's almost first export. Uh, in, you know, in the, in the medieval times, uh, we would have poets who would go to the courts of, of, of the king of, of Norway and, and Later on, we had writers who, who were writing down the histories of, of what happened in the Scandinavian countries. So, uh, Icelanders were always writers and, and poets, I think. Treba povedať, že literatúra, písanie, príbehy, to bol prvý islandský vývozný artikel. Už v ranom stredoveku z Islandu odchádzali básnici v službách norského kráľa a zapisovali to, čo sa dialo v našich krajinách, to, čo sa dialo v Škandinávii, zapisovali históriu našich krajín, boli to, boli poeti, boli tí, ktorí, ktorí cestovali, cestovali cez more. Yeah, then uh, we wrote those, those Icelandic sagas from the 13th century and, and, and it's a, you know, it's a very great, great literature and, and world, world literature and, and I think the, and it was read aloud in Iceland for centuries after centuries and there was no cities in Iceland there was no villages in Iceland so the only thing that we had 
was the literature, the stories, the poems. So that's one of the many explanations. Mm-hmm. A jeden z mnohých, jedno z mnohých vysvetlení je aj to, že musíte to chápať ako to je ten náš príspevok k svetovému kultúrnemu dedičstvu. Od, od 13. storočia, keď sa rodili tie veľké islandské ságy, ktoré skutočne sú prvotriednou literatúrou, tak Island bol úplne iný ako dnes a nemali sme mesta, ale nemali sme ani také skutočné dediny a práve rozprávanie príbehov, rozprávanie sák, to bola naša kultúra, to bola naša história, naše dedičstvo. Myslím si, že tam má korene mnoho z toho, čo je Island ako literárna veľmoc dnes. So I think it's also partly that, that we are so isolated. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have no neighbors. Uh, and, and, and especially in the, in the older times, Iceland was that isolated that, that from, the, from October and to March there were no ships that could come to Iceland because of the weather. So we had no news of the world and the world had no news for, from us. A určite to súvisí aj s izoláciou, v ktorej Island sa tak veľmi, veľmi dlho vo svojich dejinách nachádzal, pretože naozaj si to musíte predstaviť tak, že sme dlhé storočia boli úplne od, od, odrezaní od zvyšku sveta, neboli ešte také kvalitné lode, aby fungovala nejaká pravidelná, pravidelná premávka medzi nimi, čiže naozaj sme nemali ani novinky z toho vyspelejšieho sveta, z, z cudziny a žili sme vo svojom vlastnom svete vlastných príbehov. So it was either you know, kill ourselves of pure boredom or telling each other's story. And you see what we did, you know, we told us each other's story and therefore we survive. Mm-hmm. A vlastne rozprávanie si príbehov jeden druhému medzi sebou, iným ľuďom, to bol aj spôsob, vďaka ktorému sme prežili. And it's also, there is nothing else, there was nothing else in, in Iceland back there. There were no, we, we didn't have any dances, we didn't have any, almost no music. There was no art, there were no great castles like you have in, in Slovakia. Uh, there were only these small farms and people sitting there in the winter in the darkness telling each other tales. A naozaj to musíte pochopiť aj tak, že na Islande sme nemali iné formy kultúry. My sme nemali napríklad tanec, nemali sme hudbu, tak ako ju poznala západná kultúra. Nemáme napríklad ani také stredoveké hrady, aké máte na Slovensku, veľké hrady. Jednoducho ľudia žili veľmi izolovane na farmách, žili far- farmárským spôsobom a dlhé noci, dlhá tma, tma, všade prítomná tma, ľudia žili doma a rozprávali si medzi sebou tie ságy, tie príbehy. And when we look on contemporary Iceland, um, you know, you, your, own, your generation experienced this huge shift from a isolated, rather um, conservative Protestant uh, island into a modern, uh, multicultural, hip, uh, you know, uh, hub, you could, you could say. How, how was it for your generation that, uh, and how, it, how you experienced this change? Because suddenly the world discovered Iceland. You know, I mentioned yesterday to uh, colleague Helgason that we, as, a, as children, we were watching Gorbachev and, and, and Reagan meeting in Reykjavik, uh, looking at this unknown island and, and w- waiting what's going to happen. Uh, this was our first contact with your, with your country. Now it's, uh, now it's in everybody. You can fly from Vienna to, to, to Reykjavik easily. Uh, hovorím o tom, že ako Jónova generácia prežila tú zmenu od, od toho izolovaného Islandu, počas jednej generácie sa to stalo jednou kúlovou, vyspelou, uh, populárnou krajinou, ktorá je trendy. Uh, ako to prežila jeho generácia? Well, I, when I was, I was young, I was always at the summer time in the countryside of Iceland, uh, at the farmhouse and... and a bit isolated place uh, and uh, one summer, 1977 or something, uh, in the small village at, at this countryside uh, came a, a car with a tourist, two Germans or something. And we talked about it all that summer and the next summer, you know, <laughs> what are they doing here? Today we have two millions of, of tourists. Spomínam si dobre na leto 1977, ktorý som každé leto ako mladík pracoval na farmách a tak som si privyrábal a spomínam si, že raz prišlo auto a v tom aute sedeli dvaja turisti, dvaja Nemci a my sme potom o tom rozprávali celé leto a ešte aj ďalší rok a, a o tom, aké to bolo, keď takáto návšteva pricestovala a toho teraz 
k nám prichádza dva mili- prichádzajú 2 milióny turistov ročne, tak to ilustruje ten, ten rozdiel. Yeah, we could not understand why in the first when a tourist starts to, to, to come, we could not, could not understand it because, you know, for us everything is abroad, you know, you have a castle, you, you have cities, you have good weather, why are you coming to Iceland? We, we, we couldn't figure it out. A musím povedať, že najprv sme absolútne nechápali, čo tí turisti u nás chcú, veď ako máme hrozné počasie, nemáme hrady, nemáme nejaké pamiatky a my sme sa stále pýtali pre Boha, čo tí ľudia u nás chcú. My by sme všetci chceli ísť preč a nie, že ľudia chodia k nám. So what, what, what do you think, what are they now looking for, these two million people? What do you, what do you think? And it's also changing the, the island a lot, in a, not, not just in positive way. It's, a, it's, in, it's you know, it's a long, in a long-lasting Uh, it, it, it's, it, might, it might become a huge problem. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically if, if in Iceland we, we only live uh, on, the, on the shores, so the middle of the island is, is basically nobody lives there because there are only uh, glaciers and volcanoes and, and horrible stuff like that. But it's, it's, it's I mean, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's nice to look at and people like to go there and, 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 and drive around, but it's But it's also we. I think we had to make a, a, a decision as a nation because we live there and we can be just a fishing community. You know, we can just stay there and just fish our fish and and sell it abroad, and we could have fine lives with that. You could be a, a fishing, a huge fishing village, or we could become something else. And then we had to harvest something like, you know, the literature, the music. We had to turn to something creative to to. Because it's really an effort to turn a country like that into, a, into an interesting place. And you can't do it without culture. Island is an island that is obývaný predovšetkým na pobreží. Pochopiteľne, keď sa pozriete na mapu, na, na geografiu, tak vidíte, že v strede ostrova sú hlavne, ako to charakterizovala, ľadovce, sopky a ďalšie príšerné veci. Tam sa nedá žiť a, a Island musel urobiť ako národ jedno zásadné strategické rozhodnutie. A ono Island by bez problémov dokázal fungovať aj ako, ako ostrov rybárstva, čak to aj po storočia bol, ale jednoducho zrazu sa ten ostrov rozhodol, že aj jednou z kľúčových vecí sa stane, sa stane kultúra, práve, práve podpora kreativity, tvorivosti, či už v oblasti literatúry alebo inej. A jednoducho chceli sme aj niečo viac, chceli sme byť niečím iným a, a to nás asi aj robí atraktívnym a zároveň naozaj je to aj vizuálne príťažlivá krajina, na ktorú sa aj dobre pozerá. Ľudia radi chodia k nám, aby, ju, aby jednoducho ju videli. But you know, this, uh, all this tourist in Iceland, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, not a problem. I mean, of course, we are gaining from it. You know, they are flowing in with money and, and they are helping our economy. And, 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 but Iceland is a rather big country. And as you know, 90, 80% of the tourists they always go to the same places. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of places in Iceland where, where you know you will never meet any mm-hmm. tourist. Mm-hmm. Um, treba aj povedať, že turisti nám prinášajú veľa peňazí, prichádzajú a, a jednoducho platia u nás, čiže je to pre krajinu a pre jej ekonomiku aj veľmi dôležité. Skôr je asi smutné, že 80% turistov chodí na tie isté miesta a pritom Island je pomerne veľký a stále je obrovské množstvo miest, kde nikoho nestretnete, takže chodte radšej tam, ha, a, a, ak, ak môžete. Um, yes, please. No, but we need the tourists, we need mm-hmm. people to come in there, because there are only 360,000 of us living in Iceland, and like in COVID, when there were no tourists, Reykjavik was so boring. It was so, you, you would just meet your relatives and people who went to school with you out in the streets, you know? It was really, really bad. Um, ale my aj potrebujeme turistov, aj, 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 aj pre seba. Nás je iba 360 tisíc Islandianov a Islandianiek a musím povedať, že keď vypokol COVID, tak uh, sme sa zmenili aj Reykjavík na veľmi nudné miesto. Stretávali ste iba svojich príbuzných, bývalých spolužiakov. Bolo to, bolo to nudné, takže je dobré, že k nám chodia aj, aj, aj cudzinci a potrebujeme ich. A ah, okay. Ducho, uh, že počítajú aj, že on hovorí, že ich je okolo 2 milióny v skutočnosti, lebo sú tam aj duchovia, ktorých takisto do toho ráta. Dámy a páni, žiaľ, dokázali by sme sa rozprávať veľmi dlho, ale náš čas sa naplňa. 
chcem povedať to, že knižky Jona Kalmana, Stefansona sa dajú kúpiť tu na, na, v knihkupectve a spisovateľ prejavil ochotu vám ich podpísať, takže využite túto vzácnu príležitosť a I want to thank you so much for joining us today at Festival Pohoda in this literárny stan. Thank you so much. All the best to you. Thank you. Ďakujeme. Too. Ďakujeme. Thank you. Jo, Jon Kalman, Stefansson a Zikrid Hagarin Björns dotyl. Ďakujeme veľmi pekne. Ďakujeme vám, že ste prišli. A... A ďakujeme Michalovi Horeckému, že sa ujal moderovania. Ďakujeme veľmi pekne.